So I think we, we have, just that you know who are here, we are now right after the lunch break. Um, in the room there should be some 30 people, I would slow, might a little bit below 30 people. And online I think there should be 250 and 300 people, so it matters what you're saying and it is heard. Um, so thanks much, uh, Uli, for talking to us here. Um, we discussed previously how we would like to structure it, what message should be made uh, available by you. And first of all, I would like to ask you to quickly present Börse Stuttgart, especially with focus on the DV unit, the Digital Ventures unit, um, because um, you have created multiple brands, multiple subsidiaries at Börse Stuttgart. Um, and uh, I think it's helpful to really understand this because there is apparently um, an entire strategy behind with multiple silos for multiple functions. And therefore, please go ahead and explain the strategy of Börse Stuttgart with the silos or the legal entities behind. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much, Philip, for having me. And uh, thanks for the introduction. My name is Uli Spankowski. I'm uh, Chief Digital Officer at Börse Stuttgart Group. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that you say there's a strategy behind because usually what we try to do is to, to, to put some brain into it uh, and uh, set up something that actually lasts for uh, quite a while. Um, but in order to explain to you how we are set up in the digital space, I need to go back just a little bit to explain to you where we come from uh, as a traditional exchange. So versus Stuttgart is this 160 year old, uh, very traditional, um, exchange. However, I didn't uh, particularly, I did not say old fashioned because this is certainly not what we are. We are actually quite forward thinking and forward looking. Um, uh, Börse Stuttgart has grown over the last two decades significantly by actually focusing on uh, the retail investor and retail investment products, which is mainly structured derivatives and. Uh, with this focus, actually, Börse Stuttgart managed to become one of the 10 largest exchanges within Europe. So, um, in 2015, we started looking into uh, blockchain projects and the first, let's say, um, projects that uh, tapped into this, let's say, new thing of uh, distributed ledger of, of blockchain. Uh, back then, uh, not so much really into cryptocurrencies, but rather into what kind of, let's say, industrial adoptions would be available uh, by having blockchain. Um, so, well, then uh, <coughs> we also realized at the same time that this uh, uh, cryptocurrencies um, had more and more interest over uh, for the retail investors. We had the first structured products on Bitcoin. And we saw that in 2017, uh, one of the largest uh, largest traded products, uh, which had the largest trade volume, was uh, a Bitcoin derivative. So as a traditional exchange, um, you actually have one big issue, uh, or we had one big issue because we focused on retail products. However, there's no contact at all to um, retail investors because there's always, according to law, an intermediary between us and the retailer, so a bank, a broker company. And uh, so we dig more and more into the crypto space. And uh, well, I was fascinated by that already since 2014. And um, then we saw that there is, let's say, a lot of complexity in the system. Uh, it's not really easy to, you know, open accounts somewhere. If you need to open accounts, you cannot really do that in Germany or you cannot do this uh, on a very easy and smooth level. Um, and then we decided to design the digital strategy, which is a combination between a retail focused, but also a blockchain focused strategy. Um, and uh, we, well, uh, then decided that the first step that we need to do is uh, to offer a really easy way into cryptocurrencies. And this under, let's say, uh, a very strong regulator, uh, regulated uh, brand uh, within Germany. Um, and so we came up with our first pillar, which is called Bison, a simple and easy mobile trading of cryptocurrency app uh, that you can just download and, and, and start uh, trading cryptos with a trustworthy partner or trustful partner uh, within Germany. Um, but back then, the whole idea was not only to bring people into crypto and have a kind of first step into mass adoption, but rather to um, 
to build the complete uh, digital ecosystem. Custody, for instance, back then uh, was a huge issue because you heard of all the um, the hacks and what's going on with uh, with the crypto space uh, back then. Uh, so we we really thought that owning this custody part completely uh, on our own side uh, would be essential also in terms of trust for the for the customer. And this is where we created the, the custody platform, which is called BlockNox. So it's a trusted crypto custodian made in Germany. It's ISO certified by TÜV and, uh, of course, also part of Börse Stuttgart Group. But then you have retailers, you have cryptos, but then you need liquidity, right? So you tap into um, exchanges and you connect to different marketplaces. Um, but essentially, we're an exchange. so. Uh, the the most logical thing to do is basically to create your own liquidity place and your own marketplace for it, uh, particularly under a regulated uh, brand. And uh, so we came up with uh, Börse Stuttgart Digital Exchange, uh, which is basically the professional trading venue for crypto assets now. But of course, in the longer run, uh, everything is um, organized or let's say we are, we're really thriving into the direction of having security token um, offerings and security token uh, tradings on our platform. And then there is one last part missing, which is uh, the issuance platform. So we also created the primary market tokenization platform. And within that, you have the complete digital ecosystem within uh, Börse Stuttgart Group on the digital side. Uh, which is basically ready to bring um, investing and financing to the next level, all on a DLT base, uh, so so to say, a complete uh, blockchain ecosystem powered by Börse Stuttgart. So but it was a pretty long introduction, but explained uh, most of what we have. Um, no, it does make, does make very much sense. So digital ventures, that's basically the future business models. You have digital exchange as a uh, venue for professional investors at this point of time focusing on crypto. It will become uh, probably for digital securities as well in the future. Bison is the equivalent, but for retail, one is app, one is browser, right? Then you have custody in the middle servicing both. So there is just, that would be another question now, there is uh, the Börse Stuttgart digital bank missing, right? So uh, I don't know if this can be a joke or not. Uh, maybe you have thought to build something like this, but now you are um, uh, collaborating with another bank for the banking license, right? Yeah, actually, um, th that's exactly a, pr a perfect point that you mentioned here. Um, so when we drew the, the target picture, there was basically this pyramid and uh, we have the license here, we have the license there, we have the services here and there, and everything was there except for the fiat uh, gateway entry, which is uh, a bank uh, and requires a banking license. So as a stock exchange, um, I mean, we can do a lot, uh, but uh, you should always uh, focus on what you're actually good at and uh, where you come from. So becoming a bank to the same time as uh, having all these other services really um, at once sounded like quite a lot to do. So I think um, a very good approach, and this is also what we do in the future, and this is what we've done in the past, is to try to find um, partners um, that we can go on uh, on a long-term way, on a long-term strategy that uh, um, go with us uh, in terms of what we want to do. And here we found a really interesting partner in, in Berlin with uh, Solaris Bank that's also quite, uh, you know, future and forward-looking. Uh, but we also have different partners to, to roll out uh, with our strategy and idea internationally. Uh, we partnered with uh, SBI, so this is one of the, the uh, four mega banks in Japan. They um, became a partner last year, um, are owning part of Börse Stuttgart Digital Exchange. And the idea is really to create a global system for digital assets, um, for transporting whatever kind of investment and financing possibilities over the, gro over the globe. And here, SBI was really the, the uh, super interesting partner with the same vision here. Yeah. 
Okay, and if you look on the asset side, then at this point of time, you are covering a couple of crypto assets, not too much, actually. Uh, I think it's five or six or seven, something like this. Um, yeah. What's happening behind the scenes? Are you working on integrating more crypto assets? Are you working on integrating securities or security tokens? Uh, yeah. Or are there new asset classes uh, which you are trying uh, to make tradable as well. It could be shares in machines, shares in art, shares in all kinds of things. So, so unfortunately, I'm not a little child and unfortunately it's not Christmas and you can just, you know, create your wish list and then all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's happening. Um, there is a big pro of being a regulated uh, German financial institution or several financial institutions under one group um, because it's trust, it's like the level of service, the le level of uh, expertise and proficiency that we have. On the other hand, everything comes with the price. So having only, uh, let's say, a reduced amount of cryptocurrencies tradable is not due to the fact that we just want to trade these five or six uh, crypto assets. Uh, it's rather due to the fact that the process and the complexity of adding more assets, of adding more cryptocurrencies is quite complex. It goes with uh, legal um, and, and tax evaluations. It goes, of course, with we need, to, uh, we need to make sure that we can do the custody on an escrow base safely. Um, imagine there would be a hack or something uh, that, that, that would be horrible, not only to, let's say, the company itself, but to the whole group and the reputation that we have with it. So everything we do is, of course, uh, very thoughtful. And uh, due to the fact that it's thoughtful, it might be a bit slower compared to, let's say, uh, fintech startups that are or crypto exchanges out there that are completely non-regulated. Uh, however, we do work on adding more uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, one thing that's very important, all the products that we created, particularly Bison, but also Versus Stuttgart Digital Exchange, um, they are um, created in a way, well, they're not MVPs anymore, but we continuously develop the product according to the customer needs and customer desires. And yes, obviously our customers want to trade more crypto assets and more cryptocurrencies. Most likely next year we will be seeing more tradable assets on the platforms. Um, we are actively working on adding more already as of now. Uh, but as I mentioned, the processes um, need to be uh, somehow conform with uh, all the regulatory steps that you need to take. So it takes a little longer. Yeah. No, I can I can basically approve this. I I have Bison on my smartphone as well, and I'm onboarded all my uh, relatives, uh, um, younger, <coughs> my younger sister, my um, brother-in-law. Is this the right word? It doesn't matter. But um, so so it does work, and it works nicely. People actually do not want to have much more new features. They would like the Bitcoin price uh, to rise. Um, but this is something you cannot uh, affect, apparently. Well, indirectly you do, because you are, you are indirectly working on diffusing. Um, so what about, uh, what about security tokens? Uh, where are the hurdles? You know, why, why, we know that uh, regulation um, is being underway. This takes some time. Uh, but is, the, is this the only hurdle, or are there other hurdles? Because maybe there are no investors there for security tokens at this point of time, because it needs to increase. I think security tokens are a brilliant uh, opportunity for, for us to have new ways of financing and investing uh, into asset classes that are not there yet. Uh, it will change completely the market for retail or for real estate, for art, for luxury goods. So I think there certainly will be a market, um, but you mentioned the, the regulatory, let's say, framework that still uh, is being worked on as of now by our federal government. Um, but this is uh, apparently not the only thing. Well, it influences a lot. So depending on um, what kind of regulatory framework you have and what kind of setup you have, uh, you need to adapt your technology behind it. So, um, for instance, w what, what we know as of now is that the, the notary function is, is a, something that's quite important and significant to the uh, to the lawmaking uh, bodies uh, in, in, in Germany. So having a complete public chain um, might have some difficulties with having a, let's say, complete grip on, on who is uh, basically at the end responsible for a smart contract. Um, and if the smart contract is wrong, who can change it at what uh, point in time? Uh, if you think that uh, 
on on blockchains uh, once it's there it's not really uh, changeable anymore so there is a couple of things coming from the regulatory space that's uh, quite difficult to translate into the technological setup yes then you have uh, private chains uh, like Corda um, or um, Hyperledger or stuff like that um, on the other hand there's downsides as well I'm, I'm a very big fan of, of public public chains uh, however there are certain limits to what you what you can do or let's say what the lawmaking bodies would actually like to convey in law and uh, then also the regulator needs to um, roll out so it's not that easy and probably will take another 12 to 18 months until we see something really significant here I guess. Yeah, and with this, you you are still at the forefront of doing this. It's not that uh, um, people could claim that you should please be faster, right? So this is uh, already highest possible pace. Again, if it if it would be Christmas, uh, we would already have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, excellent. We had a nice uh, question uh, from the chat, um, which is related to the digital euro. Um, what is the current status of settlement of securities or assets on chain? Is this already being done? Is this of, uh, happening in the future? Or does this only make sense once you are having the euro on the same ledger because um, um, then the, the true sense um, of uh, settlement uh, comes uh, to life, right? Well, I think um, it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to have the digital euro, but uh, having the digital euro will speed up things quite significantly as it again increases efficiency on the level that you do not need to trans, uh, transform. So there is no fiat gateway necessary anymore. Uh, and if there is no fiat gateway there um, and it's already in the system, apparently it is more efficient, it's faster. And therefore, it's probably also, uh, well, helpful to the system. So having the digital euro, from my perspective, is, is, is something that we really need. But not only in, uh, due to the uh, fact that we, uh, we will foster uh, security uh, tokens and se um, security trading uh, or security token trading, but also because others are heavily working on it. And at the end, there will be, you know, the digital renminbi uh, becoming the new world currency. Um, so I think we, we need to speed up here as well as a European Union uh, in order to work uh, on that because digital currency has or gives the uh, issuer quite a significant amount of insights into who has what. And here, personally, myself, I would feel more comfortable if... Uh, if we use a digital euro and not a digital renminbi, if you think about the, let's say, parties behind. Yeah, but, but you're not working on such a topic, you know, like the Börse Stuttgart digital euro, right? Uh, because you would basically assign this to commercial banks and their business. I mean, we can we can do everything, but but speak Hochdeutsch. So, uh, um, but uh, not, not really. I mean, at the moment, we are mainly focusing on our infra uh, structure on the on the complete digital asset ecosystem. We are in talks, uh, of course, with uh, with some players in this field, but this is not the main focus at the moment. Okay, I have two more and last questions. Um, first question would be, uh, what about the timing of the next one or two years? What will happen when, in your opinion? Um, and well. Of course, with your company, but of course, also with the general market development, what would be your expectation here? And the other question is, uh, is what you are doing resonating with existing banks, institutional investors, professional investors? So are they approaching you for purchasing Bitcoin or is there not much interested from, uh, from the, yeah, let's call it legacy world? Okay, so um, this all goes together basically in, in, in one thing. Over the last... Um, uh, 10 months uh, since the regulatory framework changed with AML5, uh, we saw a lot more interest from the uh, institutional space in the field of cryptocurrencies. So therefore, answering your question, I think uh, this is highly relevant or of high relevance for the next 12 months to come. We will see a lot more institutional players in the crypto space, in the cryptocurrency space. Um, and uh, beyond that, let's say 2022, Onwards, I think uh, the system will be, well, close to ready for security tokens. Uh, it took uh, much longer than expected, uh, to be honest. Uh, and uh, well, now the uh, global pandemic uh, doesn't really help in speeding up these processes either. Um, 
And to the point that uh, you asked uh, whether we have uh, institutional parties addressing us, yes, we all had this from the beginning, um, significantly more since, let's say, 2020, and particularly in the fields of, of custody, but also in the fields of uh, versus Stuttgart Digital Exchange. Um, these banks want to have a regulated uh, partner within Germany, uh, best case, uh, that, that can offer them cryptocurrency trading. And therefore, we created the system. Uh, therefore, we created uh, the ecosystem. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for this chat, for this interview. Um, I think it was a very insightful interview. And uh, luckily, there will be good news coming from your world, your company, uh, um, despite all this corona uh, stuff. Uh, so there is some hope out there. And <laughs> uh, we're looking towards uh, what Börse Stuttgart is doing as of now and in the upcoming years. Thanks. Cool. Thank you very much, Philip. Thanks, everybody.